Okay, boys and girls, sports fans, it's Den here. We're in the depths of some hotel, which we won't name, in New York City. And to my left, your right probably, is Max, CEO of MongoDB, correct? Absolutely. Great pleasure to meet Good you to for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the first MongoDB world, and what is it, 2,000 people eventually decided to turn it's up? about 2,000 people. It's they were right around the block yesterday, weren't they? <laughs> You don't yeah, see we that. needed a little better parallelism on, on processing the line <laughs> of people getting in. <laughs> we don't see that in the enterprise gig so often, <laughs> is it? Okay, so what what are you seeing that the most important trends at the moment in the world in which you live? So uh, the, the trends that that I, I see that, that that affect our business are are a, a few things, which is one, your customers. Uh, want to take better advantage of their data. They, they want to break down the silos. They want to make the most of, of the data that they have. Mm. Two, they want to move to a more agile development process. They want to get things done in months or weeks instead of years, and they want to be able to iterate. And, and three, they, they want to leverage cloud-style commodity hardware to, to deploy. The economics of it are just too compelling. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we've seen a lot of examples. The one that I really liked yesterday was um, City when they talked about MongoDB as a service. Absolutely. Excuse me. I don't hear Oracle as a service or IBM as a service, right? That, that must say something to you. Well, it, it's interesting is as these large organizations transition to, to uh, new technologies. Obviously, the one, the one I'm most familiar with the transitions around is, is MongoDB. So mm -hmm. these new, th these large organizations ta take up MongoDB. The, uh, the, there's, uh, there are large swaths of the team that need to change how they work to support a, a new technology. And, and what a lot of them are deciding is, you know, rather than re-implement a lot of the manual processes we have and, and allow someone to requisition a server through purchasing and have MongoDB installed on it and have it show up in the data center weeks or months later in the same way that they did for Oracle. Mm -hmm. Why don't I leverage all these cloud technologies and just make it so someone can push a button and, and get a server in, in minutes? If I'm going to to add this new technology to the set of things that I'm going to support. If I'm going to invent processes around it, why don't I invent the processes the way I want them to be rather than the way that they have been? Mm, okay. There was a very specific comment that you made yesterday that resonated with me, and that is, is that the value that customers get out of using Mongo is far greater than what they're paying me, and that is okay, right? Yeah. That is so unenterprise thinking from the traditional standpoint so what's what's behind that yeah you know, um, uh, I'd say two things which is first of all uh, three things for first uh, we're, we're open source and people expect even the commercial version of open source software to, to be at a certain price point mm -hmm. and I think it's a big market mm -hmm. and and there'll be more than enough volume for us to build a thriving business at a reasonable price point. So, so it's one, I think it's what customers expect nowadays. Two, um, uh, you know, we're, we're in growth mode. And if we leave some value on the table and the customer feels like they gained enormous value from using our software, that's going to accelerate their adoption of MongoDB for other projects. They're going to tell their friends about it, and that's going to help us to to grow versus a situation where they come out of this grueling negotiation and the software might have delivered $5 million worth of value to them and they paid $4,999,999. Not great kind of ROI. Indifferent <laughs> to whether they actually did the transaction or not. Sure. But then I'd say just to take a little bit of a broader perspective, uh, I think that belief that, that the producer of the product should capture all the value from the user of the product it is not at all universal. People may be used to it in, in dealing with their enterprise software vendors. But you know, the last book that I read, I paid $20 for it. I spent 10, 15 hours reading, for it, reading it, and it probably delivered thousands of dollars worth of value to, to me in the way that it enriched my thinking. Uh, but, but the author of that book wasn't out there try, trying to figure out how to extract $1,500 from sure. me. They're just happy to sell the book for, for a fair price. And I, I think that 
that software could actually be a lot more like the rest of the economy in that respect. Final words, Seb. Where are we going? What's going to happen next year or two? Yeah, I think uh, I think that enterprise uh, technology adoption is changing very, very fast. I think that the, there's a rapid transition to a, a new generation of technologies. There's a transition of decision making where developers have more autonomy about what they're using. Some of that flowing from open source that they don't have to go and get that $5 million purchase order mm -hmm. before they can uh, touch something. And, and some of it flowing from the, the imperative to, to move faster, to, to do more with less. The, the developers are being unshackled. They're bringing in newer technologies, they're bringing in open source, they're making sense uh, of, of big data, and it's, it's an exciting time. It sure is. What is it? 7 million downloads, yep. 500 partners? Yep. For a company that... We're about, um, about 400 employees and about seven years old. And That's an extraordinary know, achievement. Three years ago, we were, we were 20 odd employees. An extraordinary achievement, Max. Great to meet you. Thank you so much for your time. Great. Great to meet you. Thank you. You heard it first here, boys and girls.